once again, good morning and welcome. Welcome to those who I haven't seen for a while. It's delighted and a lovely surprise to see you both. Uh, and um, one or two other faces, perhaps, are not too familiar with you all. Uh, welcome. I hope you can stay and have lunch with us. I hope you feel happy to take part in our communion service. You are uh, more than welcome and free to. The only stipulation is that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and are happy to accept him as your personal saviour. As such, you can take part. But if you prefer to sit and observe and watch, that is, that is fine as well. There's no, no compulsion, no uh, um, insistence, whatever the Holy Spirit, however he leads and directs you. I told um, Limbani, I cut two or three of the notices that he shared with you. A um, couple of other things I'll add to that. Um, last Sabbath, we had the lady and an assistant from the Cornerstone Counselling Services, which is a division of the South England Conference, run mainly by volunteers, professional counsellors. They have to take a qualification. And um, they left quite a little bit of material on, on the piano over there of just little booklets that will, might help people in... Um, perhaps to help them before they actually need to pick up the phone and talk to someone. Um, so help yourself to those, share those with uh, anyone you need uh, to share with. Um, the counselling service, I understand, is a very well while, worthwhile and beneficial thing for some people. The only negative thing I had personally, that um, they do actually charge for their services, which I can't get my head round, but... Um, um, that is that information is there something i've been meaning to say for a couple of weeks of two or three weeks ever since our adra campaign finished i know one or two people like to um collect their small change up during the week the year when they empty their pockets out and things like that or when they empty the filter pit out of the washing machine and remove those odd coins um, if you would like to take a tin home to be filling up with those old coins over the years. There's two or three tins sitting up on top of the piano there. Take one, fill it, bring it back next campaign, and that will be brilliant. And we, if we want more than that, we'll find some more tins for that because we know that, um, that the work that ADRA does is so beneficial to so many people in need. A couple of weeks, is it a couple of weeks ago, there was a wedding down in Windsor um, that the television and the media made quite a fuss about. And it was a good wedding, as weddings go. Um, I don't think a lot of expense was spared. And, um, and a lot of people enjoyed it. As, uh, several people watched it on television or... I don't know how many million or billion did they say watched it worldwide on television. And there was a, a lucky, in comparison, a lucky few had actually got, I understand, two types of invitation. One was actually the very privileged to got an invitation to be inside St George's Chapel itself. But others of the good of the community and charitable organisations were invited to come and stand outside. And, you know, there was a lot of people who were absolutely delighted with that invitation. And they in attended, and undoubtedly they were dressed. You know, I think the dress shops did very well in the weeks coming up there. If we had to have a new outfit and a new hat, and uh, well, the ladies anyway, and, um, uh, and the likes like that, and um, everyone looked prim and proper. And I don't think anyone turned up late. Well, perhaps if they turned up late, they wouldn't have got admitted anyway. Um, which, uh, which reminded me a little bit of uh, what we finished up talking about in our Sabbath school lesson this morning about the, the ten virgins. Five of them were, five of them were late um, because they weren't ready. Five of them were just about made it but whether they had time to go out and buy that new dress because they were slumbering when they should have been preparing. <coughs> but 
Yeah, in this country, we quite like our royalty. Personally, I quite like our royalty as head of state because it prevents any of our politicians from having the job. And anything that stops Tony Blair or Roger Osborne or you, Dave, from being head of state must be good as far as I'm concerned, but no, that's enough of politics. But um, uh, what, what have these... Well, Prince Harry got married, a minor royal. He's right well down the pecking line. There's no way he's ever going to become head of state unless poor old Prince William and his whole family go down in mid-Atlantic somewhere. Um, so comparatively unimportant, but what has he done for us? Well, you could say he has done his part in defending the freedom of this country. One of the helicopters he used to fly was down at the Suffolk show the other day, and it's an impressive bit of kit. Um, I wouldn't have liked to be on the wrong end of that in a um, serious situation. And I often wonder when we were at home if he ever flew over the top of us because he was based at Wattisham near Ipswich and a lot of the training was done all round the battle area in Fetford and quite regularly the helicopters uh, buzz backwards and forwards. Um, but that's, that's all he's done for us. His brother, perhaps, he's done more. Of, I wonder whether because he used to fly as a pilot on the East Anglian Air Ambulance. And a couple of times an air ambulance has landed not too far from us. I think it's usually, perhaps, you know, horse riders have taken a fall or something. Um, and the air ambulance, you see, come in and circle around, find its landing point and, and come down. You wonder, well, what if... I wonder if Prince William was flying that. Well, he was certainly, he was certainly rescuing somebody. There was no doubt about that, rescuing them and getting them to hospital. But um, we hold, most of us hold um, these young men in quite high esteem. But when it came to this morning and um, um, Mary gave me a ring and said, I'm sorry, I... I I won't be able to make it. Uh, Rima's been having dizzy spells and she um, can't get anyone. She, 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 need, she needs me. And I, we understand a, a mum and a, a, her daughter when um, things are like that. She says, um, um, I hope you don't mind stepping in. And um, all I could think of after that was really, I mean, it's in a sermon. It's just a few thoughts that I have uh, gleaned in the last little while. All I couldn't think of, uh, oh, we must have that song, Jesus Paid It All. And when I went to type up the order of service this morning, I dis discovered it was already there. But Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. And that's the thought ready this morning, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. We owe him much more. I break a debt of gratitude for the rescue operation that he had put in for humanity than any earthly monarch could ever in a million years do. But as they were queuing up in their finery down at Windsor a couple of weeks ago, how do we acknowledge that person that paid it all for us? We mentioned to the children about the, the small ships, and I mean there was many a many a soldier who owed his life to the brave men who manned those ships. I don't expect they even knew who their rescuers were, but that was something that they would be lifelong, eternally grateful for. When the choice is gunfire in front or drowning behind, any form of rescue is brilliant. And that's the same with us. We have the devil after us as a roaring lion seeking whom he may destroy. As our um, lesser study reminded us, he is more crafty, more intelligent, more um, scheming than any human being. And without being rescued, we don't have a hope. And God knew that. And he put in a rescue operation that was more costly than the Dunkirk little ships. 
he, along with Jesus, the Godhead, decided that the only thing, as we know only too well, that Jesus had to pay it all. And we know how he came as a babe. We know how he lived his life, showing us how we can, showing us how we can have the power that is available through the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to be able to have us, to be able to obey the God who paid it all. And then, of course, in those final, final days, those final hours, he took upon himself our sins. He did not deserve anything that he had. But as we read in our scripture reading, he not only didn't deserve it, he went the second mile to demonstrate to us what he would do for us and what we can do for each other. We read about how he, he, the number one guest, took off his, well, he didn't have a posh coat, but the nearest he had to a posh coat, he took that off, wrapped a towel round his, his waist, took a bowl of water, and went to work on those dirty, smelly, sandal-clad feet that walked those streets, the same streets that the donkeys walked and the camels walked, and they are no respecter of what they leave on the ground and the dust and the dirt and everything else. And Jesus bent down to give that example of washing in humility the feet of his disciples. And that's why he has invited us to uh, also, in humility, wash each other's feet. I bet there's no one here that didn't either this morning or last night make sure they had clean feet. Um, but, so it's symbolic, like the whole service is symbolic of what Jesus did and the fact that he paid it all. And then, of course, after that, we come to the crucifixion. He took the burden of our sins upon him. And the burden of our sins meant that he's, you know, it seems to mean that he was separated as he had never been separated before from his father because of that, um, you know, I... I I sort of try and imagine it. I, I remember Pilgrim's Progress, where Pilgrim had this burden on his back, and I could see, um, I could see that Jesus had, you know, such a huge amount of sin, our sins, the world's sins, piled upon him that it, uh, it blackened out everything else, where even he, the God, man, God, the God, man felt alone and isolated. His disciples deserted him, his friends deserted him, and he died, we know, on the cross because he paid it all. And we are so thankful for that because of that, and that's why we are remembering it, because he must have known we were liable to forget. Do this in remembrance of me, Remembrance is what sometimes we either fail to do or we take too much for granted that we don't give it a second thought. So it's good to come at a regular interval as part of our worship in remembrance that Jesus paid it all. Yes, I know some churches have this type of service every week. Um, and brilliant, but do they really take it with the seriousness that it deserves? Are we remembering that Jesus paid it all? And what should be our response to that? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that's very nice. I'll see you when you come. You don't have to worry too much about me. I'm drifting along quite nicely. If things are going reasonably, it's nice to know you're there. 
I'll put you in the same category as the insurance company, there for emergencies. If we are really thankful to someone who has rescued us. You know, the rescue is not completed yet. The major stage has been completed. It will come to its total completion, not until Jesus comes again. So what are we going to do in the meantime? Try and get ourselves back in trouble again? Or are we going to be so eternally thankful to the God of heaven, to Jesus Christ our Saviour, that we will commit ourselves to him? Because without him, we are nothing. Without him, dare I say, a lot of us wouldn't even be here, wouldn't even be on planet Earth because he gives us our breath every morning. We have so much to be thankful for. Because, and I keep repeating it, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. And someone that we owe everything to, I think our love for and respect for, should mean that we will do everything in our power to acknowledge him as our saviour and to help others to know what he can do for them as well. As Ruby pointed out this morning, as a church, as individuals, are we doing everything that God has asked us to do? He has rescued us, no question about that. We have a future if we remain true to him. Whosoever believeth in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But he doesn't want us to be standing around, idling, waiting. He doesn't want us to be like the ten virgins in the parable, slumbering. He tells us to go and make disciples of all nations. Well, that's not easy for all, any of us, but all of us within the field of influence that God has put us in can help others, someone, to come to know him. Purity says, I have a burden to share Jesus. And I think all of us do. She said, but it's not easy. In the, in the busyness of a doctor's surgery, in a... 10 minute time slot I have with a patient. Um, when the talk of God is not really approved of, how can I, as a Seventh day Adventist Christian, witness? But we witness in ways we don't even realize at times. As long as we are open to the opportunities that God gives us, we are able. You know, even those of us who are more reserved and not so outspoken, he gives us the opportunity of influence in helping someone. So we, my prayer for each of us, as we celebrate our communion today, not only will we remember, and if we don't remember anything else, remember the first line of the chorus of 184, Jesus paid it all, all, to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. Sin has put us all under sentence of death. He washed it white as snow. He has taken that death sentence. We can walk off death row into eternal life because Jesus paid it all. <laughs>